So in this section, we're going to be concentrating on being able to sketch uh, rational functions of the form y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. Now, I kind of have included this already um, in the previous sections when we were dealing with inequalities, uh, because I went down the route of sketching these uh, in order to solve the inequalities and not doing it from a wholly algebraic way uh, all of the time although sometimes an algebraic way does help. So I kind of have already gone through this, but uh, this section will be devoted to how to sketch that and just to make sure you are as confident as possible. So it may well be that you're watching this section first before you go back and have a look at it there, okay? So have a look at the inequalities. So um, what I want to uh, go through in this video is really introduce the uh, process that I go through when I sketch one of these graphs. So there is an order to the way that I sketch these graphs. Whether, um, whether I was explicitly taught to do it this way or whether I picked this up as I went through, um, as I, and as I learnt uh, mathematics, I'm not 100% sure. But hopefully uh, me explaining it to you in this way m makes sense, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an exemplar one to ha be having a look at. Okay, so let's say I've got uh, y equals 2x minus 1 over x plus 2, okay? So let's say I'm wanting to sketch this graph. Now, the first thing that you sh should identify, once you've drawn some axes on, okay, the first thing that you should identify is where this graph, where its denominator is zero, will be a problem, because that means you're going to be dividing by zero. And so, there will be a vertical asymptote when x is equal to minus two. That is the first thing that I identify are there any vertical asymptotes? Okay, so in general, my step one would be there are vertical asymptotes, or well, in this case, for these types of graphs, there'll only be one vertical asymptote, okay? Vertical asymptote when cx plus d is equal to zero. So you can rearrange that to get x is equal to minus d over c. Okay, so in our case, it's x equals minus 2. What's the next thing that I do? Well, the next thing is I look to see where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. Now, a graph crosses the x-axis when y is 0. The only way that this can be equal to 0 is if the numerator is zero. The only way any fraction can be zero is if the numerator is zero. Because if I just multiply both sides by the x plus two, then I'm going to get automatically to two x minus one is equal to zero. So the denominator doesn't make any difference. Okay, There's no, it, it doesn't add anything to me finding out where it crosses the x-axis. So I can immediately identify that it must cross the x-axis at one-half. That is the value when the numerator is zero. So I'm going to pop that onto my sketch, one-half. So the second thing I've done is crosses x-axis when ax plus b is equal to zero, when the numerator is zero. So that means that x is equal to minus b over a, okay? And so that is the second thing that I do. Now the next thing that I do um, is I would look to see at when it's crossed or where it's crossing the y-axis. Now from uh, sketching straight line equations, uh, so linear graphs, quadratics, cubics, cortics, whatever, okay, uh, trig graphs, whatever, the way that you work out 
where a graph crosses the y-axis is putting in x is zero. So when x is zero, what's neat about one of these is that you can just like put your hand over the x's, okay, and you can see that y is equal to minus one over two. So putting my hand over the x's, I'm just ignoring the x's because they're both zero now. And so y equals minus a half is where it must cross the uh, y-axis. Okay, so crosses y-axis when x equals 0. So that implies that y is equal to b over d. Now note the way that I'm writing this down, just to be clear, this isn't the way that I learnt it. This isn't something that you would want to put on uh, necessarily a revision card, because what I'd be thinking is, I, d I want to get past that point. I don't want to learn it like verbatim, like a load of rules like this. What I want is I just want to be able to go straight from this and know the structure that I go through. That I find the vertical asymptote first, then I find out where it crosses the x-axis, then the y-axis, and then step four, okay, which is going to be, is there any horizontal asymptotes? Okay, so a graph like this, of this form, has a horizontal asymptote. Um, now, you can work that out um, by using a neat little trick of dividing top and bottom of your fraction by x. So, what you're going to do is divide top and bottom by x. So, divide each term by x. 2x divided by x is 2. 1 over x, so we've got 2 take away 1 over x in the numerator. x divided by x is 1, plus 2 over x. Now, that may make things look more challenging to deal with, but actually, you can now look at that and say to yourself, right, well, as x gets larger and larger and larger, in either the positive or negative direction, so if you were to substitute in x equals a million, or minus a million, okay, then the value that you get would mean that you've got a 1 over a million and a 2 over a million, which, or 1 over minus a million, or 2 over minus a million, which are very small. And if you make those x values get even larger, then those fractions get even smaller. And they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you can ignore them. And so, actually, this will approach 2 over 1. So, y equals 2 over 1 is your horizontal asymptote. So, y equals 2. So, I can draw that on. Okay? Right. So, horizontal asymptote... Uh, when x tends to positive or negative infinity, okay? Now, take that um, and divide top and bottom by x. So, as x tends to infinity, y tends to a over c. Okay, so what do we have left? Well, it's kind of like dot to dot now, right? So we know it's got to go through these two points. We know it's got to tend towards that asymptote. We know it's got to tend towards that asymptote. And so it's got to come up from here. Now, this is the problem. When, whenever you draw uh, onto your graph, the two points where it's crossing the y and x axis, then you've kind of got to get your graph going through, which I always find quite challenging. It's, sometimes it's best to draw the curve first, then pop these two values on. Okay, so something like that. 
Okay, so it's going through minus a half and a half. It's tending towards the two asymptotes. That's not all, though, because we've got this portion of the graph up here because we've got to think about to the left of uh, minus 2. Now, to the left of minus 2, you can't have the graph being down here, okay, because it would have to tend to this asymptote and it would have to tend to this asymptote. And if it was to do that, it would go and do something like this. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is this. The graph can't cross the x-axis again. We identified before that it only crosses the x-axis once, and that was at 1 half. So it can't cross the x-axis again. So this part doesn't make any sense. Can't do that. So we can get rid of that. That's rubbish. OK, so that means that rather than tend towards down that way and that way, it's got to do that. It's still tending towards both of those asymptotes, but it is in the portion of the graph that allows it to do that without crossing the x-axis. OK, so this is what our graph looks like. These are the steps that I go through when I draw one of these graphs. Now, you may see me sometimes do these uh, the other way round, or, you know, I, I might even swap those two, depending, you know, how the mood gets me, right? It doesn't matter. Essentially, these are the four stages I have to go through in order to build the picture up. The first thing that I would always do, however, is find where the vertical asymptotes are, OK? The other bits you can kind of do in any order you like, but I would always start with vertical asymptotes because that tells you where the problem areas are. Okay, so this is the structure, and we're going to go through some examples of these in the next few videos.